For 30 years, the churches of Rwanda have been the only safe haven when bloody civil wars have swept through the country. So it was to the churches that thousands fled when the massacres began in April, urged on by official government radio. And it was to the churches that government troops and militiamen came to violate that sanctuary, to slaughter them with guns and grenades, with bayonets and machetes. It looks like a paradise of fertility and tranquility. Rwandans call it the land of a thousand hills, Africa's smallest nation, and with almost seven million inhabitants, one of the most crowded countries on earth. In a country that is normally teeming with people, there is an awful silence hanging across much of Rwanda today. Hundreds of thousands, possibly millions of innocents, have fled their homes terrified of both sides in a civil war that became genocidal after the Rwandan president's plane was shot down a few weeks ago. Now, waiting in the wings, is a new elite, one that claims it will bring not only peace, but democracy to this benighted country. Rose Kabuya is a major in the rebel army, the Rwandan Patriotic Front. Under last year's failed peace agreement between the government and the front, she was to have become a member of parliament. The patriotic front now controls more than half of Rwanda, its army remorselessly closing in on government troops. Rose's job is to win the hearts and minds of a people terrified by a war they cannot understand, traumatized by killings beyond their comprehension. So every member of his family and all his village were killed, huh? His family yeah. and then the whole, for me. all his broad family. The village, yeah. the even village. the village. Yeah. Yes, he's the only one who's Out of how many? So how many was that? About 600. About 600 dead? Yeah. In one village? With children. It is a conflict portrayed and oversimplified as one of tribal warfare between Rwanda's vast majority of Hutus and its 8% Tutsi minority. Herself a Tutsi, Major Rose Kabuya is out to convince the people, especially these Hutu villagers, that the Patriotic Front will obliterate the ethnic divides that the government has manipulated to hold on to power for 30 years. To the Hutu villagers, she portrays the rebel army as the best and only chance for peace in a nation now notorious for bloodbaths. First of all, I told them who I am, and I assured them that they shouldn't be scared, they should start their normal lives. Were they afraid of you because you came from the RPF? Mm, there's one old man who said that uh, he was a bit afraid. But the rest said that it's normal they've been meeting some of our soldiers who have been assuring them that there's no problem. Born in exile of parents who fled earlier massacres, Rose and her husband David have been fighting with the rebel army since it first crossed into Rwanda from Uganda four years ago to start its long campaign. We have to give security to our people. You can see most of them are displaced, others are in hiding. So the most important thing that the RPF will do is to secure the people. We've been with the RPF fighting this war for about four years. So if we are not convinced that we are doing the right thing, 
I think we, we would not be here. This is what happens when a government desperate to cling on to power unleashes the primitive fears and ancient prejudices of an ill-educated people. There was no spontaneous massacre. The killing was efficient, well-planned. David, tell me about this woman's extraordinary story. So a group of militia they in her armway, together with some soldiers, and they all came up, came to their house, and uh, gathered them somewhere with the rest of the population in the neighborhood. They start hacking them. They hacked on the neck, both legs, both arms. With her, she had four children. Two died. She has two with her here who are also hacked. And then they realized that uh, pretending to be dead would save them. So they stayed in the dead bodies, in the group of dead bodies, for a week. For survivors, there's only the most basic treatment at improvised hospitals. This patient has been uh, uh, injured by bayonet, bayonet, in in. Uh, yeah, yeah. In, She's in very grave danger of losing her life. Is that right? Yes. If nothing is done. In two days, she can die. Government-backed militias in almost every town and village systematically attack Tutsis and thousands of others, anyone suspected of opposing the government. It went beyond ethnic violence. Hutus like Dr. Sustain Buchana turned to the rebels to be rescued from the mayhem. But these injuries, in some cases, have been done by their neighbors. How are they ever going to live with them again? Some people have been killed or injured by some neighbors because of ideas from politicians. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, people live together. 